Um, whilst there have been warnings, including from the Med Service on checkpoint last night, when the river burst its banks, it happened very, very quickly. Edgecombe has had a major flood before, of course, in 2004, and with a river running through it, it's built against flooding. But this was big and fast and... It's, it's really scary because it's right at its peak. At stretch, heavy automotive and machinery, they're beside the river, but on a corner that normally pushes the water away. But yeah, it's coming up under the ground, to, as I see over just where the embankment is. The rain was so heavy, the ground so wet, that there was nowhere for the river to go but up. We're, we're up higher up above ground on a two-storey, so we're just trying to get everything up there that we can get. And, um, and then just, yeah what we can do after that. So it's spilling up over the river, but it's coming up through the ground too, is it? It is, yeah. Just as we're looking over, is that a pipe coming through there, Kevin? Why well, it's coming up under the ground? It's coming out of that pipe. Oh, it's coming out of that pipe, which is yeah, which is off from the um, river bank. Right, so it's just stormwater overflowing, is it? It's just the stormwater overflowing. Edgecombe is built to withstand flooding, but its defences simply weren't holding. And um, there's a concrete wall that runs along um, College Road, because the stock bank's quite narrow there, so it's a reinforced concrete wall. And that's about oh, 100 metres long. And that, that broke away. And so all the water's heading off towards Matatawe kind of thing. So it's taking out, going through all the houses on that side, heading towards Matata, and which is about four streets. And when you say broke away, what, 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 yeah. did, did the water go round it or did the concrete wall just break off? Well, yeah, it was seeping under the wall and apparently it just collapsed, yeah. That was Tom. Like so many families, they'd evacuated. He's no idea what they're going back to. Schools were closed, of course, except for Thornton School down the river where the principal, Shelley Bremner, was looking after children as their parents did what they could to save their belongings. Well, we've got parents um, who live in Edgecombe, so they're evacuating Edgecombe at the moment. So we're just taking care of children while the parents can sort themselves out. No need to involve little kids in the stress and risks of that. So they're sitting here eating ice cream and eating toasted sandwiches. Everyone near the centre of Edgecombe was getting out as fast as they could. I just left straight away, to be honest, and am now out of my home, which is about 7 k's out from Edgecombe. So you were at work, you were at Liquitec, were you? Yes, I was at work, yeah, and the... Um, News came around the street that Edgecombe was being evacuated and for everybody to get out as quickly and safely as possible. So that's what we went ahead and did. And so you didn't muck around, you just got the hell out of there? Well, I didn't need to because when I drove into work, I drove over the actual main entrance into Edgecombe and you could see that the river was about to go over any side of the bank, take your pick pretty much. And um, so when they said it was going to go, we realised, well, yep, pretty serious. Been through that once before. So got in the car and left. Charlene left work for home, but it's a home that was effectively destroyed by flooding back in 2004. They stayed on the land and rebuilt. Well, Which you, is where I still live. <laughs> you, you lost your home in the flooding in 2004? We did, yeah. yeah. And, and, you, and you're back in the same place now? Were, were you, were, Absolutely. Gorgeous place to live if it's not flooding. <laughs> 13 years on, having thought the new stop banks and all the work done since 2004 made them safer, she could do nothing more but pack prepare to leave and watch the river rise. Most of our stuff's up off the floor. Um, dogs are sitting inside ready to get dragged into the car. Cats are in their cages. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Just the norm. <laughs> Just the norm? Just the norm. What else are you going to do? It's Mother Nature. You can't change it. You can't change it, but you can reflect on how bad it's become. But yeah, that's no, not good. I don't know what I've seen the river high. How long have you been there for? Uh, oh, my whole life, 84 years. 84 years, higher than in 2004, higher than Bryce can ever remember, beating all defences. So yep. is, it, is it time to look at the stop banks there, just making them bigger and better? <laughs> That's been done. It's been done in the past. It's been done several times. So what do you do? That's a very big question in Edgecombe now, but today there was one immediate answer. You go to higher grounds, like the golf club. So where were you? Uh, we live in between Edgecombe and Teteko. R not on the river. Uh, right by the river. Rangi and her family were more evacuees, waiting it out, waiting to see what had happened. And just see how bad it actually is and if we're allowed to go back into our homes. But... I, yeah. hope, I hope you're going to be OK. Oh, we'll be fine, yeah. We've had a few natural disasters here before and we always seem to bounce back, so we'll be fine. Earthquakes, floods. Oh, yeah.
It takes a strong person to face like that, that kind of flooding, the loss perhaps of a home and much of a town. Edgecombe is a river town. Yeah, yeah, well the river runs almost literally down the side of the town. The town's literally built right next to the river. I mean, we walk along the river every night with our dogs and things. That's Charlene again, who loves it there and won't be leaving, despite 2004, despite 2017. She'll stay, wait it out, tidy up and start again. <laughs> what else do you do? <laughs> Charlene,